Hey guys, this is Brian with Prokashi.com back in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And today's video is going to be about making a soil generator. Okay guys, a soil generator is nothing more than some container that uh, has an open bottom and an open top and something to contain uh, around the edges that you can bury or uh, mix your fermented compost with with some soil and cover over and allow the other half of the process for Bokashi composting to take place. Um, simple things for uh, a container would be a five gallon bucket with the bottom cut out. All you need is a little bit of soil that you can set it on. If that soil happens to have some grass on it like here, set it right on there like that and then you can use that surface. If uh, you have a spot like I do here, I like this spot and I've made my uh, compost here before because um, it's, it's shadowy, it, it, it's cool and it's a lot of shadow on this side of the house. Uh, just set it straight on the dirt. You don't even have to loosen the dirt up although this dirt is loose. Um, use what you have around your house. I have a recycling bin. I roto zip the bottom out of it, set it straight on the ground. Um, you can use an old um, pot or base that you can just take the bottom out of, set it on the ground, and mix your fermented waste with your um, soil. And this is this isn't anything special, guys. This is quite literally, you know, old soil that just here just comes right out of here, gets thrown in there, and then that's it. Um, if you don't want to go that route and you already have a compost pile, by all means use your compost pile. Uh, if you have one of those tumbly bins like I do that's very slow uh, in the way it works, go ahead and use it. You can just uh, take your compost and uh, spread it out a little bit. Put your bakashi uh, fermented food in here, mix it up, twirl it a few times, close the lid, wham, there you go. You can make your compost pile go a lot quicker. Uh, of course, there is always the old-fashioned method uh, that I've demonstrated many times. You can take your soil, pull it aside. This soil that you see here is Bakashi composted soil. If you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen this this little plot before and you can see I'm just digging down with my hands straight to the bottom what you would do is you would dig a hole about I don't know six eight ten inches deep I'm just the width of my hand plus you would take your fermented food out of your bucket and uh, pour it in there so let's do that real quick just a demonstration of the classic way um, you don't need any special tools uh, you don't have to go out and buy anything Here's what I had at the house. I can use a hammer. Obviously, I can use my hands, and I can use this little fork. So, let's say for the class, classic method really quick, uh, we want to bury it in our uh, normal bed, or let's just say for the sake of argument that this container here is uh, a raised bed where the bottom is touching the soil, top is open, something to contain around the sides. Um, we wanted to use that because we had it available. Dig yourself a little trench such that you got soil on the bottom, which obviously I do. Pull it out. Here you go, guys. That is ground pork. It's been sitting there for uh, two weeks. I'm not going to pull all of this out so I can do a demonstration. Oh, crap. Mom's going to get mad how that got in there. Ooh, buddy. She's going to get mad. I love you, honey. I'm putting it back in the, uh, in the dishwasher now. Um... Let's put a little bit of the fermented waste in here. Once it's in here, we've got oranges, apple peel, uh, banana peel, meat, it's definitely a no-no. You would then chop in a little bit of soil. When I say chop, I just mean mix in a little bit of soil to it, just enough to get it covered, guys. Nothing special, nothing fancy, and then cover it back over. That's it. Cover it back over. If you have some extra soil you'd like to add to it, just so long as it's covered by a couple inches, you're set. Um, anytime that you do something to the soil, uh, in my opinion, the soil is a living organism. 
uh, in nature. You never see bare or exposed soil. If you do, it's not healthy. Um, the soil is basically the earth's skin. Cover it over. So what I do is I just take some straw because that's what I have. I've used grass clippings before. Cover over your spot. What you want to do is protect your soil, but you want to keep the moisture in there and you want to keep the sun off of it. Remember, this is a living product so that the microbes in there, the more you protect them, the more you keep them cool, the more you keep them moist, the faster they work. When they work fast, that means that they bring in all the beneficials. So, that was the classic method there. Let me show you uh, the uh, method of making uh, a generator box. So, we will take the same bucket fermented waste. You can see I've got onions, bread, uh, lunch meat. There's some ham, some lunch meat that was in there, some strawberries. And if you don't have a lot of space and just using what you have, sorry, using what you have at home. All right, now I'm going crazy. Here's my hammer. Just, guys, simple tools that you have at home. Use your hands. This, you don't have to go buy gizmos and gadgets with this composting. What you do, say you're, um, say you're a small person, say you're elderly, uh, you're infirm, you have some injury or disability that keeps you from doing a lot, and you, you want to do some gardening, you want to do some composting. It's just this simple. Take your bucket. This is just some soil that I literally just dug out of the back, see? Got an old tomato label, so it's not out of the uh, not out of the bag. There's no tricks. Get yourself a little mixing bowl, which I have here. It could be anything. Take your little tool, pull it out. There you go, guys. Mix it up with your tool. When I say chop in the soil, that's what I mean. Just take your soil, chop it in there. And again, this is stuff you got around the house, guys. You don't need to make this any harder than you have to. And now that you've got this mixed up, what you do is you put it in whatever container you want. Say that you uh, want to do container gardening. Um, and let's say you don't have soil. You live in an apartment. You live on a patio. For the sake of argument, let's just assume that this bucket without a bottom, let's play pretend, does have a bottom. What we would do with our play pretend bucket that has a bottom although it doesn't is we would take uh, a handful or a, a couple handfuls of soil and we would cover the bottom of the bucket so that we got about an inch or two on the bottom. You would take your bakashi uh, composted stuff that's been chopped with soil and obviously you would use two hands whereas I'm just using one and you would put it in there. Now you can put more, you can put less. Uh, you can fill this thing up to, I say about two thirds or three quarters. And the reason I say that is that you want to cover the top layer with a couple inches of soil. So you have soil on the bottom, and if this actually had a true bottom, which it does not, we would have filled it with about two or three inches of soil. We would have taken our Bakashi um, material there. We would have uh, chopped it up with some soil in here dumped it in here and then we would have come back over and filled it up with uh, a couple inches of soil so in theory i could say i'm containering gar or container gardening i could take that bucket take four or five of these fill them to about one third and then fill the top two thirds with uh, the rest of my soil wait two weeks and then plant right in there and as the plant grows down the roots are going to fill here and by the time the roots get down to here where all this uh vegetable matter is, where all that organic matter is, it's already broken down, it's already uh, decomposed, and then you've got a natural fertilizer. Your plant's roots will naturally seek out, go down, and just infest that area. So if you have um, a patio, uh, a porch, or any place that you, you want to do this with, you can do it. That bucket fits under a sink. You don't need a lot of space. Let's say you have a little more space and you have no more than a corner like this. Uh, you could be in a condo, you could be in an apartment and you've got just a little corner. Take your little corner, take your container like so, take your um, Bakashi food waste, and forgive me because this is one-handed guys, so it's going to take a little bit of 
coordination. We have the bottom zipped out. We're sitting on soil. It can be bare soil. It can be soil with grass. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and uh, spread out your food waste in your soil generator. And let's look through and see what we got. Let's see what the McGrath family had uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, a lot of potatoes. My wife's German. She makes awesome dinners. Uh, a lot of it meat and potatoes kind of stuff. Potato salad for a party. Leeks from soup. Um, gosh, I can't tell you what that is. That's a bread of some sort, but it really doesn't matter. Put that in there. Uh, take some soil. Again, it could be soil you've dug here. It could be soil that you've pulled out of your compost bin. Or, in this case, it could be some soil that I had in the back. I just put it in the bucket for demonstration purposes. Cover it over. There you go. Chop it in. Again, when we're chopping it in, all we're trying to do is mix the food waste with the soil so that the fermented food waste comes in contact with the native soil. Inside the native soil will be the native microbes and microorganisms and by doing this you uh, give an easy pathway for the little guys to come in here and start eating the food. Your worms will definitely use it as the highway to heaven and that's it. Once you have it chopped in, mixed up coarsely, kind of like this, you'll just come back through and put your soil on the top. And I don't, for demonstration purposes, I don't have any soil to put on top. But you would put your soil on the top so that you have about two or three inches above it. And look at the natural soil that I chopped in, guys. Already, with the natural soil, you've got the roly-poly bugs already in here. Look at that. Unscripted, you know, just as it is. There you go. Some of the soil that I had picked up already had roly-poly bugs in there. If you've got roly-poly bugs, somewhere in there there's probably some worms. If not worms, then the worm eggs, the little cocoons. And they will hatch and they will start taking over and infesting. So, you're going to be on a solid soil. Whether it has uh, bare soil or you've got chickweed or whatever you've got around here. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as, it's the, as long as it's the ground, you're good. You're going to chop up your fermented food waste. You're going to put your soil on top. And, like I said earlier, the soil is the skin of the earth. And in this case, let's say for here, I had uh, filled it up to the top. Just go ahead and put your straw, uh, newspaper, carpet, burlap bag, leaves, anything. Cover it over. Protect it. That's what we need to do. We need to protect the soil because it is the uh, skin of the earth. And if you have a bare wound, it, it you know tends to be infected, uh, not heal properly, and then uh, it doesn't do well. So I'm going to run off and put some soil up to about this level. You can see already the little roly-poly bugs working their way around, finding their way. They're going to start decomposing right now. And as we're speaking, the uh, worms and the uh, bacteria, the fungi, all the little critters that are in the soil here uh, are getting the messages and the signals that there's food here and they will actually find their way up through the bottom, through the food, and they will turn all that into this soil right here. This is Bakashi composted soil. Let's find a spot where obviously it's not been disturbed so you understand that I'm not making this up. Little roly poly bug. And then you'll have, in about two to three weeks' time, depending on the temperature, you'll have soil that you can do this to, guys. You can just pick it up, put your hands straight through it, and that's what you can plant in. And, as I was telling you earlier, little guys like this find their way in. Little guys like that find their way in. And they're all here because it's high in organic matter. There's a lot of bacteria for them to eat. There's a lot of fungi in here. There's a lot of natural yeasts. It's just an awesome place for them to make a home. And the cool thing about this is, with Bakashi compost, uh, when you're doing this entire process, the interesting thing about this is, 
the bacteria, the fungi, and the yeasts all give off beneficial chemicals. They may be a, an enzyme. Uh, it's just a, a little protein that makes chemical reactions happen. So now they have added the, uh, the uh, biologicals in the Prokashi uh, wheat bran, have added their own uh, vitamins, their own minerals, their own enzymes to the soil. Now, when you put this in the soil, when you chop it up like we did, the natural uh, critters in the soil start adding theirs. And now you're building on top of that. So the food had a value. It has a higher value because it's broken down more available. And the bacteria, fungi, and yeast have added their own uh, special little elements. We turn it into the soil in our raised bed. And the little roly-polies, the protozoas, the nematodes, and especially the worms, guys, Worm compost, some of the best stuff there is, some of the best stuff you can have. And guess what's happening? You're bringing the worms in, they're eating your food, and they're raising the nutritional value. So you started with a product you were going to throw away, preserved it, increased its value, turned it into the soil, it's increased its value. Imagine what is going to happen when you plant in it. The product or fruit of your planting will have that increased nutritional value, and guess what? You can cut down on your watering. You can cut down on your fertilizing. You can cut down on pesticides and fungicides because the plants that you have have everything they need to be healthy. We have given them everything. We are in balance. We're not out of balance. We're not forcing anything on the plants. This is a natural system, and natural systems are self-regulating. They give up when they need to give up. They give up as much as they need to give up and then there's no more. Whereas with other types of chemicals, fertilizers, fungicides, and things like that, we can overdo it. And uh, I think you're, you'll enjoy it. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If you have been skeptical or curious, uh, get on my webpage, uh, write me, give it a try. I mean, what have you got to lose? You can have a thousand pounds if you fill a bucket a week. You can have over a thousand pounds of uh, organic fertilizer in your in your ground, and it's all basically free. If you're uh, if you if you eat healthy, you eat chemical free. Well, then you've got organic fertilizer, and see how much you'd have to pay for that. So this is Brian with Prokashi.com. Thanks for watching, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you on the website. See ya.